Oh, uh, welcome. Uh, can you hear me uh, behind? Okay. Um, so I have uh, 20 minutes to show you uh, the Perl to Java compiler, which is basically uh, it's an environment where you can uh, run Perl inside JVM. But um, it's a lot more than this. Uh, this uh, is a long project. It started as uh, it started from Pro Six actually, and uh, at some point um, I had a mini Pro Six that was uh, self-hosted, and uh, somebody suggested, uh, well. Why don't you make a uh, Perl 5 uh, self hosted? And uh, I thought it would be a nice challenge uh, because with uh, self hosted Perl 5 that doesn't depend on C, uh, you can actually run it uh, anywhere. So uh, after <coughs> several iterations, this became a uh, Perlito, which is a compiler collection and it uh, implements Perl 5. And well, not so much Pro 6 because uh, I'm mostly working on the Pro 5 uh, part. And it could be called PPC just because uh, we had the PPI and PPR. <laughs> PPC would be nice. <laughs> uh, but it's not. But uh, yeah, I'm uh, Flavio and I work at uh, Booking.com in the PPC team, uh, which is not. Uh, Unfortunately, <laughs> that's uh, for uh, pay-per-click. So why this? Uh, basically, well, as a descendant of uh, pugs, this is actually just for fun. And uh, enjoy being part of hackathons and uh, building a community. But also about the technical parts, uh, like being able to explore how we use, would use type variables in Perl and uh, just explore the limits. I have a business excuses, uh, excuse for this because uh, uh, my company also uses Hadoop and uh, produces uh, Android products, mm -hmm. and basically Java, even if most of the code is Perl. So we could uh, maybe at some time in the future we could compile, actually use this compiler in production. Um, this is in uh, GitHub, it's called Perlito. Uh, there is, uh, not everything, but a uh, branch of it is uh, also available in Sepan. Um, yeah, just to get it, these are actually the only limitations it has uh, while running on Java that uh, because Java has uh, the, its own memory management, but uh, it's not trying to implement this try, but also uh, auto closing files when uh, handle goes away is not implemented because we don't know it went away, and there is no access, and uh, because it's not in C and. Uh, it's not Unix uh, environment, so we don't have some signals, and the file system is a bit different. And uh, application startup time is slow. But if you look at uh, JRuby, they have same problems. So I'm, I can't solve this. Well, maybe I can try it. So what's good about Java? They have lots of modules. They have threads, and they do have this memory management, which seems to work quite well. Um, I think uh, I'll uh, interrupt a bit and uh, show you what I want to show you, which is um, something uh, like, yeah, I can use this, uh, let's do this. Uh, so you know this uh, camel, Code. It's uh, obfuscation, but it's nice that it's uh, very hard to parse and uh, contains uh, 
but it has a data section and it opens the data section in uh, variable and reads from it and has evolved. So it was a nice challenge. So let's see this. Um, it's called Java. I call this jar called uh, Perdito5.jar. And uh, it better set uh, include the directory. And uh, that's it. Then I can call camel.pl. You have white space. Sorry? This white space. Camel? No, no that doesn't matter. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, and that's it. Um, you can see, I hope you can see. Um, but uh, let me go back a bit and let's uh, maybe increase this a lot. Oops. So, shift plus. Yeah. More readable. Uh, let me try some really simple things. Like, uh, let's put a minus V. And then you get, uh, well, this is pro. And uh, you can have a minus E and say, uh, well, well, what? Well, the other way around. And close, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we can, so now we know uh, what I'll be talking about. And um, so let's go to the compiler. Uh, there are actually very few things that are work in progress. Uh, overload is uh, actually both overload and encoding are implemented, but there are so many special cases that I consider it work in progress. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, what inspired me to give this talk, it was not in the program. I, I managed to put it in the program because of the, I saw Damien talk and he was uh, talking about uh, uh, defining keywords and the way the uh, grammar work in, uh, works in uh, uh, Perlito is uh, I define a keyword uh, token, which uh, implements uh, more or less an implementation of a token from Perl 6. And um, so this matches the dot, dot, dot. This is the yada, yada uh, operator, dot, dot, dot. Then uh, this uh, creates a syntax tree that is actually a die. And uh, arguments is uh, an implementer. So I have <laughs> here a translation from uh, dot, dot, dot to plain pro. Uh, and uh, example from the grammar. And uh, what happens uh, inside, uh, I'll maybe show you later. Uh, the, this is actually, uh, the token is um, a small compiler inside uh, Perlito and it compiles to Pro 5 and then this Pro 5 is compiled to Syntax 3 and then we can emit uh, well, Java and everything just like everything else. So we can bootstrap the compiler and the compiler can, can run inside Java. Um, I'll show you uh, some things outside the talk, maybe uh, because um, this uh, there are the Perl, this uh, Perl compiler is a generic Perl compiler. It compiles Perl to syntax tree, and then uh, there are a number of products that are built on top. So there is this uh, Pro 5 to Pro 6 compiler, which is very simple. It's a more or less proof of concept. Uh, I already executed something here. Uh, it runs in the browser. Uh, the compiler is compiled to JavaScript, and then uh, it's a module which runs uh, loaded from this page. Uh, so you can see here, for example, the uh, for uh, reverse uh, X, this becomes a uh, for flip, no, down there. It's, sorry, small fonts too much to show here. Um, yeah, um, then uh, there is the counterpoint. Uh, well, of course, this also 
um, yeah, this is a long uh, example per program. Uh, uh, I press uh, execute. Uh, there is a another uh, small program which is just an if all that is compiled to JavaScript, and we feed this text to the program, and it uh, then uh, down here uh, is the output. So the whole thing, the whole program here was converted to JavaScript, which is this window, and uh, executed, and you get output uh, in the browser. And the way uh, this works is we have this large uh, three megabyte uh, uh, library that is the compiler compiled to JavaScript. And uh, in JavaScript itself, we implement a print. So we have to print to implement uh, uh, Warn std out std uh, std here and uh, std uh, goes here std out goes here and we also compile JavaScript to show it but it's plain Perl inside. Now back uh, here, so we had this uh, grammar and this view. Uh, just click here. Yeah. So, uh, grammar solves this problem that we have a source code and uh, we need a syntax tree. That's fine. But what happens if you have a begin block? Begin blocks are just executed and go away, and they leave no, nothing to be parsed. So, uh, what happens is. Uh, the begin block is parsed, we generate a syntax tree, and then we add some instrumentation so we can uh, introspect uh, everything that happens inside the begin. And uh, I'll show you this. And then there is a small Perl module that will dump this uh, data structure that is the result of begin blocks. It will dump it back to, uh, actually, I can just copy paste this. I'll copy the work here, just one second. Control C, yeah, go to terminal. And uh, run. So what happened here is uh, we had this begin block, which is, uh, it's a loop. Uh, it iterates over uh, three values. There is a my dollar i, so this dollar i is captured into the anonymous subroutine. And it creates uh, names and installs these uh, three subroutines in uh, our program area. And when we convert this to a syntax tree, it becomes, uh, well, what do you expect? Three subroutines. Right? And each subroutine has its own dollar uh, i with the initialized value, and it's captured, and it just works. So it's a kind of, uh, well, we have the grammar for uh, text, and we have this thing for the new blocks. And because this uh, generates, ah, by the way, uh, my common line, let me explain. Um, let's see if I can make this higher. You can see in the back. It's Probably <laughs> doesn't want to be bigger. Yeah. So let me explain this common line. I'm calling here uh, Java. We're calling the Perlito jar. I uh, have an include and a demo begin .pl and compile to Perl five. So I'm using here uh, uh, Java to compile. Five to five. Um, actually, uh, when I could have used uh, uh, Node.js for this, or I could have used uh, Pro Five itself. Uh, the compiler is exactly the same; it's just a different uh, backend. Um, so I think uh, at this point, I have. Uh, told you most of the things I had to 
tell you, and uh, if you have any questions, I would like to direct the talk to areas that you have more interest. Or I can just continue. <laughs> I was just going to say, uh, this is not going to say, I don't think anyone realized you've taken your compiler and compiled it to JavaScript so that it can then run on a JavaScript backend to compile Perl code to Perl 6. There yeah. are three languages here, and it's just simple. <laughs> <laughs> you don't stress how simple it is. That's what's so elegant about all of this. That's a, I, uh, one aspect. If you, once you have a Perl compiler, it doesn't matter where it runs. And you can do anything with it. Yeah. I just wanted to labor that point, because I think the room didn't get it, because their heads didn't explode. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, um, you, you're, you're parsing Perl at the, the, the surface syntax by, by literally expecting the source code. Right? Um, yeah. Would you have any thoughts on, rather than doing that, getting the actual Perl binary to compile down to an octree? And then inspecting the op tree rather than inspecting the source. Would, would that be a, an, another approach? To this uh, has uh, this is how uh, BCC uh, yeah. BC uh, works. But I then don't have portability uh, because I, I, I this I can run in uh, JVM. I can run in browser. I can run in Android uh, natively. But oh, so you can run the compiler in other places. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. How we can have the Ava, that was the head exploding point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I should, let, let me show you uh, because yeah, of course. Uh, but uh, I think this is uh, one of the next slides. It's exactly the next slide. Um, so this uh, this code is uh, yeah get uh, some input. Then uh, I just added the uh, here doc because we discussed uh, yesterday. Um, let me uh, enlarge a bit. View, present. Yeah. Uh, so what is this? I, I have a, a variable, and then I uh, chomp, uh, say, and then uh, increment, and say it's what it wants. But this is text. And um, the, I run this. I'll click that. <laughs> Sorry, this only works if I'm not in this mode. Yeah. There, uh, paste. Yeah, so it's uh, waiting for input. I'll put A, B, C, and I get uh, increment to A, B, D. Um, so, uh, what do you get from this? Um, if you look at if you do this, which you probably shouldn't, uh, compile to Java instead of execute, then you get a bunch of uh, code here. And uh, you will see, among other things, a big uh, Java compile, PL Java compiler dot eval PL string and the whole thing. So the, the PL to Java compiler is. Uh, needs to be, at runtime, uh, available. That's why you need, uh, well, you need to compile the compiler to Perl, to Java, or to JavaScript in order for this to work. Yeah. This is a fixed string eval. What if you have variables? Then it will, uh, yeah, then it will concatenate and uh, let me, uh, so this uh, demo eval. Let's yeah. see. Uh, so let's put this uh, eval. Uh, oops. Let's make um, eval dollar y. Let's put here uh, my y equals this and. Let's say uh, y dot yeah. Is this what you mean? Yeah, then I believe it should just work, but you never know. 
Oh, oops. Yeah. Okay. So the file name is the same. Uh, Then um, that same thing, and you get your thing there. Uh, but uh, your um, C Java, your uh, source code becomes a bit uh, different. And uh, let's see. So you do a eval string of a Perl string of uh, Y uh, to string plus everything else. Uh, so it's a uh, Basically, uh, stringifies the variable, concatenates, and uh, yeah, go No, no okay. secret. So somewhere in all this, there must be a grammar for Perl five, right? Yeah. So did you develop it on your own? So reverse engineered it from? Um, where did you get take grammar from? Basically, um, writing tests, because uh, yeah, I. Reading the docs helps a lot, but uh, writing tests will show you all the corner cases. And you put your own grammar in this, with the whole yeah. with your definition. Yeah, uh, let me uh, get here. Uh, grammar, um, uh, bigger. Uh, let's see something interesting. Uh, uh, control. Uh, so you get. Uh, Ah, that's what you meant. If you have your helpers, like this token thing, and then yeah. you use your own yeah. structure to define the Yeah, let me get okay. uh, something. Uh, yeah, if yeah. if is uh, if space and then create scope, uh, yeah. then there is either else or uh, else if, if this is recursive. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, a simple if. And uh, this is creating a, a if sentence tree. Uh, but uh, in order not, I don't need uh, that much code if I start reusing. So unless it's actually a syntax of if, mm -hmm. but uh, with the conditions reversed. And uh, yeah, a lot of uh, compression goes here because this had to work on inside the browser. Uh, so it had to be really small. But it's not that small anymore, but try. Mm -hmm. I still remember your talk from Frankfurt, 2012, and I tried it out with the JavaScript version, and it had some problems with rec access. Did it work on this? Um, some things, uh, but yeah, I, the problem is uh, I started working on the Java uh, version, and uh, so it became a priority. Yeah. And uh, uh, not everything that was, uh, the Java version now is much closer to Perl than the JavaScript version is. Uh, okay, also because print. Java is more flexible in implementing low level stuff. I see. And uh, so many uh, errors that are common to both implementations. So the, uh, uh, the parser is much better now, but the runtime uh, for JavaScript didn't change much. But you're also parsing the regexes. Yeah. But I rebuild uh, them into native regexes re re because otherwise, uh, well, it's possible, but I had to finish something. Uh, <laughs> you, you would have to, think, to implement a uh, uh, regex engine. I know that uh, JavaScript regexes are on the level of Perl 4. Mm -hmm. Everything which came later is not implemented in JavaScript, more yeah. or less. Yeah. So but, uh, I, can, I can show you a few things. I think in, in the browser we can see this. Uh, we uh, have, mm, let's see, is this, yeah. I think uh, we have uh, uh, some bridge access here, yeah. and they have some interesting things. Should be, because this is a demo. Uh, have a vow string, uh, uh, some packages. Mm. No, this is quite old. But anyway, uh, the uh, JavaScript implements uh, slash e, and it also implements slash e. e. Uh, probably uh, slash g doesn't quite work uh, because boss. There was no easy way to assign the boss to the string without making an object, which makes everything slow. So some details are not there. Okay. Not because they are impossible, but because they are not practical. Like if you want a small feature, 
and you have to uh, just make things slower, uh, you have to balance. But do you get an error that uh, uh, G is not supported? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> um, so Sorry. I have yeah, to about Java, finish the not talk. Uh, do I have time for? Uh, no, out time. <laughs> okay. So we, but that's good because we had the questions and. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs>